Hello and welcome back for some more Mastalicious Maths. Last time we talked about parallel lines, this time we're going to talk about perpendicular lines. There's again an algebraic symbol that you can use for perpendicular. It looks like this, or it looks like this. A horizontal line with a vertical line, horizontal line with a vertical line, a little r. The Americans like that one, the British tend to do that one. Perpendicular lines cross once and they form 90 degree angles. Line, line, crossing here, lots of four nice little right angles in there. But there is a test to see if lines are perpendicular if you know the slope numbers. You multiply their gradient, oh I've already written that, multiply their gradients and you get, I'm going to write that a bit bigger, minus one. Okay. The other way you could think about this is if I divided both sides by m2, this m2 would disappear because it became 1, it would look like that. If I decided to divide both sides by minus uh, m1, sorry, then the m1s here would disappear, become 1, and you'd end up with that. So here's a couple of examples that I'm going to walk through with you now. First of all, stop the video and decide what the m values are here. Once you've got the m values, put them into this equation and see what you've got. Then try and work out what you think the conclusion is. So stop the video and try that now for yourself. Press go when you're ready. Okay, so you're back. So on this one, we're comparing. You should have seen that m was 2. Here we're comparing again. m is minus a half. If I start this calculation, we have m1 and m2. Line 1, line 2. m1 is 2 times m2 is minus a half. Positive, negative, negative. 2 times a half, minus 1. Wow, so this has worked. So this means the lines are perpendicular. Okay, so now stop the video. Have a go at example 2. You know you want to. Okay, so you're back. You've pressed go. Time to see if you're right or wrong. So let's look at this one. M3 on this one, because I called it line 3, line 4. So I'm going to have to change this to M3 times M4. So M3 here, compare the M's. We've got 3. Compare the M's here for M4. I get 1 third. We take them together. Positive times a positive is a positive. 3 thirds is plus 1. Oh, so... That means that we know minus 1 does not equal plus 1. So this means the lines are not perpendicular. And I hope that's what you got. But there's a quick little method. So if I told you that I had something, uh, a gradient that was 3 sevenths, can you instantly without doing all this work, tell me what the perpendicular gradient would be. If I have a gradient of 3 sevenths, what is perpendicular to that? Stop the video, have a think. If you've got an answer, come back. Okay, so 3 sevenths, I'm going to tell you uh, the perpendicular is minus 7 over 3. So let's see if you can do this one. What's perpendicular to minus 3 quarters? Stop the video. Come back when you know. Minus 3 quarters. What is it perpendicular to? Okay, did you say it was 4 thirds? Then you're starting to get the idea. Okay, let's see if you can do another one. What is perpendicular to 7? Stop the video and have a think. Perpendicular to 7. Okay, you're back to find out what is perpendicular to 7. It's minus 1 seventh. So, what do you do? Well, you get an opposite all the time. So one of the things you have to do is change the sign of the number. So if the number is negative, it becomes positive. If it's positive, it becomes negative. Because a positive times a negative makes you the negative. And then you have to make a reciprocal. So that's the quick way to work out a perpendicular gradient. This was a third change the sign, it's minus a third, made a reciprocal, becomes minus three. Seven thirds, change the sign, it becomes minus, make the reciprocal, it's minus three sevenths. 
minus 8, change the sign is 8, make a reciprocal, it's perpendicular is 1 8. Okay, so uh, write these notes down and then you can go to the next video and I'll see you then. Thank you very much.